showing off for the female, the other male joining in, and they square off. Hey, what's up, Reefer? Super, super, super exciting day today. I used three supers because the Fish 40 17 gallon mangrove tank is arriving today. And I challenged you guys last time to guess what fish I was gonna get, and surprisingly, two people actually got it. These are not fish that people typically keep in reef tank. It actually took me a while to track down a breeder that actually offered these for sale. And what's even better is that he has been keeping them in his uh, frag tank, so they are already acclimated to salt water. But since these fish are tiny, I wanna make sure this tank is totally safe for small fish. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually remove the clean shrimps it's time for them to go to the uh, forever home the 135 gallon tank as well as moving this guy right here this is a belly minimax carpet anemone here's a rock nice and purple carolina right here in this little box uh, 12 fish. It was shipped with USPS priority overnight. Uh, it was $50 for shipping, actually 52 if you want to be exact. So let's go ahead and open them up and see how they're faring. I'm always a little nervous receiving live fish, especially in this case it's from a um, private seller. So far the packaging looks really professional and just talking to him sounds like you've done this many times and he is really meticulous. Uh, he packed still warm and we got we have these little guys. We got some of these um, reflective material to keep the heat in. And touching it, it's definitely still warm. And that's great because yesterday it was really cold here. It's about like 50s. Oh, I see fish swimming around already. This is cool. These are tiny little fish. These are called the blueback, blue-eyed dwarf rainbow angelfish. It's a mouthful. Let me go ahead and pull them all out before I explain what they are. Even smaller than neon tetras, no wonder. Um, He's feeding killifish size one food. And he also feed um, baby brine shrimp. All right, so that is the unboxing. Um, I have to say the construction of the box is uh, really exact and precise. Look at this. What the heck? And here they are. Look at how, dude, how tiny these guys are. These are like, I, I knew they're gonna be small. I didn't think they would be this small. There should be four males and uh, eight female in here. Oh, here's a good look of a male right here. These guys are tiny. It's probably like an inch and a half, including the fins. Uh, so these fish are really interesting. They are from Australia and they live in brackish water. However, in terms of salinity, they can live anywhere from like fresh water to even saltier than ocean water. In terms of salinity, they are even found all the way up to 40. So the natural seawater of 35 PPT is no problem at all. In fact, this group came from the breeder's frag tank. From what I find online, it seems like they like higher flow. Um, the turnover rate of the tank is eight to 10 times, which I believe this tank may be a little bit short of, but we'll start slow, especially because I have a um, turbine style power head in the tank and uh, I really don't want to chop up any fish in this case. I may actually put a foam guard over this uh, power head just in case. Now, one thing I'm slightly concerned about is that due to the tiny, tiny size, I actually think that the fathead dendro may pose as a risk for these fish, um, even though they're not known to be like super aggressive in terms of corals, but looking at the size of the fish versus size of dendro, these fish totally looks like um, the size of food that the dendro will, will capture and eat. Another really interesting thing is that the bag, the breeder use. So I think this is the type of bag that keeps the water in but does promote um, oxygen exchange between the inside bag and outside bag. So that's interesting. It's actually the first time I'm seeing these bags being used. Looks like he pretty much just um, used a heat sealer to seal the bag and that's pretty, much, that's pretty much it. As you can see, it's not, actually there isn't any uh, kind of like oxygen forced into the bag. Everything looks good. Everything arrived safe and sound, all alive. There was the option to do priority shipping versus express shipping. Express shipping was pretty much twice the cost, but of course I want to make sure the fish arrive nice and safe and as quickly as possible. So we opt for the express shipping. While Emily's playing Call of Duty Warzone, I'm in the process of acclimating these um, Blue back, blue eye, dwarf angel fish. Dwarf angel. Let me try that one more time. 
blue back, blue eyes, dwarf rainbow fish. Man, it's a mouthful. So I got 12 of these guys, but when you look closely, I actually got two extra little fries that kind of just came along for the ride. These are like newborn, they're tiny little dudes. To be honest, like from the top down, they look like guppies. From the side, especially the males, they look fantastic. Yeah, the fish are a little bit too small for me to feel comfortable putting them in with the fat dendro, at least for now, until they're more comfortable with the tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the fat dendro to the big tank first, and then we'll go from there. All right, I'm double checking the salinity. Right now in the tank is 35. Um, so in the ship water, it's actually 20. It's interesting, maybe, these, maybe the seller actually acclimated them to brackish because I knew they came from a frag tank. So I guess what I need to do is uh, for the next couple of hours, I'm just gonna add a little tank water into this um, this little container right here to slowly raise the salinity. It's no big deal because these fish are super hardy when it comes to salinity. They can go anywhere from completely fresh water to actually up to 40 PPT. Moments later. All right guys, so it has been about two, two and a half hours and the salinity has been slowly raised to 30. Emily is still playing. Call of Duty Warzone, actually doing really well. I was surprised. She's ready to be an e-girl. Just to be safe, I want to turn down the front. Right now it's 25%, I gotta remember. Let's dial back to like 10% while the fish kind of settled in. So nothing gets sucked up in the uh, power head. Blue black, blue eyes, dwarf rainbow fish from Australia. 12 of them with two baby fries. Welcome to a new home. Dude. Sorry, it's Leon screaming with excitement of these little fish. One thing I noticed is that they're all kind of sticking on the surface and that's not a good look. From what I remember during my plant the tank days, this is usually what happened when I dose too much CO2, meaning the oxygen level is not high enough in the tank. Just to test my fury, I'm gonna add a air pump, a battery operated air pump in here to see if the condition improves. Well, as a test, you can probably hear it already. I hooked up my battery operated air pump. Make sure that uh, there's a nice amount of oxygen within the tank itself and to see if the fish kind of comes down from the surface of the water um, afterwards. So that, with that, I can kind of determine whether it's because a fish likes sticking near the surface of the water or it's because like there's not enough oxygen within the water column. One week later. Today, we're gonna do a quick swing by a fantastic one of my local fish store. I'm gonna pick up some uh, cleanup crew for the mangrove tank because I moved the cleaner shrimp to 135. So as I feed fish, a lot of the fish food may drop into the bottom of the sand bed and I want something to pick them up. I'm gonna stay away from shrimp because I have some really, really small fish. So I wanna go for snails. I'm thinking a mixture of Nasaria snails, bumblebee snails, and also I'm gonna move the tuxedo urchin from the mangrove to the 135 because the tuxedo urchin is making it a habit to pick up all the macro algae on his body. Good to go. That's a wrap. Yeah. Oh, it's nice to see this tank again, but look at this. I'd love to try a cocoa worm at some point. Really cool to see a carnation corals. We don't see this that often, at least not these days. Uh, the MPS seems really difficult to keep, but since I have like that mangrove tank that plans to be like half macro, half uh, MPS, I'd love to give that a try at some point. Just like a really cool setup. This is their display tank at the front of the store. SPS seems happy. Very nice. Got this crazy looking ultra flower nems. These are beautiful, man. These super cute little baby clowns. Still pretty well stocked. Still pretty well stocked. All things considered. Two hours later. All right, guys, just got home. So from Fantastic, I picked up a bunch of cleanup crew. We got one series of snails to take care of all the fish flake or fish pellets that the fish missed. Uh, I was hoping to get more, but unfortunately they're pretty much all sold out. They're really limited in terms of inverts. They pretty much just have like Australia snails. Able to find, I think like three or four series snails as well, and the rest is uh, uh, just Australia snails. And over on this side, on the way back, uh, swung by my Reef Sensei Telegram's house to pick up this interesting softies right here. I believe these may be the um, blue zinnias. They do not pulse, 
but when they expand it, they look almost like an enemy, which is really cool. So we'll see if we can uh, grow this coral successfully in the softy tank. But the main purpose of swinging by my Reef Sensei's house is actually to pick up light for the refugium, for the Dragon Breath Macro Refugium. Because after talking to some folks who are really into macroalgae, they say that the red macroalgae actually prefers a more blue spectrum of light versus like the white ones that the green algae like Chato's like. Um, so obviously I was using the wrong kind of spectrum over the Dragon Breath Macroalgae Refugium. So I was able to pick up some light for me to test out from my Reef Sensei. So thank you once again, Jim, for coming through once again. All right, guys, and here's the group of snails right there. When I put snails in a tank, I like to kind of just dump them all in the middle. Well, obviously I got to flip them so that they all orient it facing down it just so that I can see uh, which ones crawl away and which one stay in the same place and if they stay in the same place I'll pay extra attention to them only unfortunate thing is that this trip I was only able to get one Nasaria snails I was hoping to get maybe three or four and we were able to get just one bumblebee snail so I was hoping to get at least four of them because they are all like detritus eater which is what I really need three days later all right guys so I've been trying some weird solution with this mangrove slash macroalgae tank one of the issue I have with this tank is that sometimes it get like oil slicks across the water surface which inhibits uh, gas exchange which is never good on the tank on nano tank I have a hang on the back aqua clear 70 filter with one of the ocean box design overflow so that kind of helps skim the water surface a little bit I don't have that with this mangrove tank because I want to keep this really simple. So one of the solution I'm testing out is actually the bubbler right here. So that's one of the Pico 4 inch Imaginarium uh, air stone right there that I kind of tucked underneath the heater. I have it hooked up to a mechanical timer where it's going to run about 15 minutes every I think like six hours or so. So far it's been working really well ever since I've implemented this for a couple days ago I don't see the oil slick on top of the water surface anymore. And of course with the air bubbler the added bonus is that we're introducing more oxygen into water based on the uh, additional surface agitation once in a while. Another thing I've done since a couple days ago is actually digging up the um, foam guard for the MP10 which is fantastic. Now I'm not worried about the MP10 sucking up little fish and chopping them up so I've slowly started increasing the flow. Right now I'm running it at about 15% in lagoon mode during the day and when the light is off I dial it back to I think it's like 7% 7, 7 or something like that in harmonic flow just so that they have like some gentle gentle flow. There's like a variation. And one of the worry that I have is that you see that they're all kind of hanging out the surface of the water, right? I wasn't sure if it's an indicator of lack of oxygen in the water, but after talking to the breeders and after seeing how they behave as soon as the light is off, they all kind of go into the middle of the water column or the bottom. I feel like it's actually based on um, the behavior. It's not really due to the lack of oxygen or anything in this tank. So that makes me rest a little better. And the funny thing is like every morning, one of the first thing I do is uh, count the number of fish. I have 12. A week later, we still got 12 and they seems to be fattening up a little bit and definitely a lot more comfortable in this tank just look at them kind of swimming all over the place hey guys i have a genius idea i just put something black in the back that was from the playmats you guys have been giving my keyboard setup so i got the new keyboard and this playmat that wirelessly recharges the mouse is actually the box that i'm using for now until i figure something out i need something black in the back just so that you guys can see the fish that i'm talking about right here look at these guys if I may be honest, like when I first got them, put them in a tank, I'm just like, dude, what have I done? However, after like two or three days, they started growing on me tremendously. In fact, right now, I feel like this tank is so interesting, even more interesting than the 135 at the moment. But you know, my interest in tank swings from tank to tank we got every week. And that's why multiple tank is pretty awesome. I have been feeding this fish a lot. Every time I take a little break of work, I feed them a mixture of uh, TDO Chroma Boost in extra small and also powder form. I also feed them Reef Roy. Supply surprisingly, they actually eat Reef Roy. But right now, I'm going to feed them a little bit of the baby Ryan shrimp. I want to show you guys how active they are. Notice how they are at the water surface right now. I'm going to add some of these guys right here. And just wait till they don't realize the food is in the water. And they will activate. What's that? I think they're talking about those old stuff. Old stuff. Oh, dude, that's a CD. That's a CD player. Hmm. And that's a, uh, you know what you this is? You know what this is? It's a car window, right? Oh, I guess Watch you're old too. Never mind, I thought you were younger. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, look at these fish kind of come to life after they see the baby brine shrimp in the water column. And what I notice is that they tend to go after the food kind of like at the server first, and then they start going to the mid tank and bottom tank to kind of hunt down. 
the other food item. And this also depends on what kind of food uh, I'm feeding them. Gosh. Or Tamagotchi. I have a couple as well. And in terms of my daily interaction with this tank right here, basically first thing I do in the morning, I come over here, say hi to all my fish, and then I count them. Uh, it's been about a week, week and a half, and we still got 12. That, that is a good sign. Unfortunately, I do not see those two baby fish anymore. Um, they may still be in the tank somewhere, or they may have perished. I'm not sure. One interesting thing I noticed about them is like during the day, they like to hang out at the top, the water surface, right? Just waiting for food to come in. As soon as this light turns off, they all kind of sink down to the mid water level. Uh, they still have a couple stragglers that stays near the top, but a lot of them actually go into the middle or the bottom water column. And I'll show you a little bit later on in this video. It is really interesting to see. And here you see that I guess they polish off whatever is on the surface and they notice that there's more food in the middle. Look at how fast they're darting around. So I've been slowly ramp up the MP10 as a result. Right now it's running at about 20% lagoon mode during the day. And as soon as it lays off, I turn the flow down to about 10% in hum is it harmonic mode or something like that? It's a, basically a gen more gentle flow. And I also try to construct certain area in the tank where they can get out of the flow, but so far they haven't really been using it. During the day, again, like I mentioned, they've just been kind of like hanging out at the top. They're just really, really cool. Looks like they polish off most of the baby brine shrimp. I'm not gonna saturate the tank too much. Oh well, who am I kidding? Let's, let's feed some more. Are right, we gonna follow up with some larger food. These are the uh, TDO Chroma Boots in extra small size, which to this tank, to these fish is, is a mouthful. Let's see. So they're kind of floating at the top right now. You see certain fish going after it. Most of these guys can kind of take these pellets, but there's like one or two smaller ones couldn't handle the size of these pellets. So these are tiny, tiny fish. So I think these fish is actually a really good fit for this tank. This tank, once again, is gonna be a mangrove tank with macroalgae and some MPS, for example, like the Christmas tree worms right there. And I'm feeding really small particle foods that if the fish miss them, the coral is probably going to appreciate them. The thing that's, that's missing in this tank is some cleanup crew. In terms of snails, I want to add at least four or five Nessaria snails. I believe the amount of food uh, I feed this tank can sustain them. The next morning. It's early. It's about 8 o'clock. We know it's early because the mangrove light is on, but the tank light is not on yet. I want to show you guys the tank right now just to see how the fish behaves uh, before the main light comes on. I'm sliding over here. You see all the fish. They're kind of chilling in the middle and bottom of the water column. They're definitely not at the top yet. And right now the water is a lot calmer. I believe it is in harmonic mode. And right now the water is a lot calmer. And you see they're kind of swimming at the mid level versus the top level when the light comes on, which is really interesting. What? <laughs> look, at, look at my son and my wife creeping up on me. In the morning, um, right after the light turns on, they will go through a pier of this, just um, flirting, mating, and um, from talking to the breeder, the female is actually going to go drop down to the sand bed and actually lay eggs on the fine sand if it's successful. So this is the super cool interaction um, that I was looking forward to in, in terms of keeping a dwarf rainbow fish. This interaction reminds me of uh, Celestial Pearl Daniels when I kept them. They're really, really cool. Although in terms of dwarf rainbow, this is much more prominent. Like I see this so often versus the uh, celestial pro Daniels. I see them once in a while. Look at this. I, I guess like all four males are now joining the fray, which is really cool. And this is one of the uh, cool social interaction that I mentioned that can make me fall in love with this fish within the last two weeks. I just seriously, there's like a little social community right in here, which is fantastic. It's beautiful to see. And we don't see this too often in, um, especially in a nano tank due to the size. Because uh, for saltwater fish, a lot of us keep them either in singles or pairs. It's really rare that we can keep a group of fish like this. And it just so happened that these dwarf rainbows are the perfect size to keep a show in a nano tank. But again, probably best for species only tank or really friendly tank mates. And uh, this includes like corals. And I'm not even sure if I want to keep them from enemies. I'm not sure if they're smart enough to avoid enemies. But I feel like they're worth it because look at these social interactions. They're so, so interesting. I guess that guy just came up there trying to, uh, trying to chase tail. These are the cool social interaction that I mentioned earlier in the video. Um, I'm glad that I was able to capture it in uh, here within this video because I wasn't sure if they would com feel comfortable in the tank to do this. I was expecting to do this maybe like a month or two down the road. I didn't expect them to start doing this within two, two and a half weeks. So this is fantastic to see. Showing off for the female. 
the Adamel joining in and they square off. And my baby, honest for a second, uh, I think like online, a lot of the photos paint them with like really vibrant color. I'm not sensing that yet. I do see the nice blue stripes, but then I feel like it then is not as vibrant as what I've seen online. Maybe after a while, the color is gonna settle in a little bit, or maybe the tank is not dark enough for them to show off the color. I'm gonna play with the background a little bit. And I hope that as they settle in even more, the coloration will come out a little bit more. However, just simply based on color wise, there are much more colorful nano fish for the reef aquarium out there. But Due to their small size and due to the nature of their social interaction, I feel like they're such an interesting fish. So I find myself revising my initial impression of them. I actually think they are really, really awesome nano fish. The problem is their size. I feel like you can't really mix them with um, larger fish or even more aggressive corals. So I feel like they probably fit better on a species only tank or a tank that's just really, really small fish friendly. I was not able to find too much information of these fish online, whether it's in reef aquarium or just brackish aquarium. So if you keep this fish, have kept this fish, know about this fish, Fish, please leave a comment and if you have any special tips or tricks please let me know as well I really appreciate it and since posting about these fish online a lot of people have already reached out asking where I got them and I will be leaving the breeders information in the video description right below and I cannot find any place selling them aside from aqua bid so I tried my luck reach out to one of the seller there and then I was really lucky that I got hooked up with the breeder Luke with his permission um, I'm sharing his and with his permission, I'm sharing his email address in the video description below. So if you're interested, reach out to him, see what he got in stock. Alright guys, I rambled on long enough in this video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like and leave a comment, especially if you have experienced these kind of dwarf rainbow fish. And I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12.30 Bye.